Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AITA for allowing my dad to believe I was missing and leading to his disownment. I 17 used to have a wonderful relationship with my stepmother, Tammy. I genuinely saw her as a mother figure and was so excited when she found out she was pregnant. But everything changed in 2020 when I had to stay with my dad during the lockdowns because my mom, a surgeon, was working on the front lines. At first, everything was fine, but when Tammy was about four months pregnant, she started snapping at me for no reason. Things that never bothered her before suddenly did. I wasn't a messy or loud person. I did everything I was asked to do and respected the rules without any back talk. But no matter what I did, she got angry. It got to the point where she couldn't stand being in the same room as me. I ended up staying in my room most of the time, only coming out to do chores or get something from the kitchen. One day, she came into my room, furious, and started yelling that my room was so smelly it was making her sick. I pointed out that the only mess in the room was a half-eaten bag of chips. She burst into tears. As always, my dad babied her and made excuses, saying she was struggling with the lockdown pregnancy and not being able to see her family. My mental health deteriorated. I felt like a piece of trash, always scared my mom would get sick. My hair started falling out from the stress. The breaking point came when I was at the kitchen table, reading a story on my phone, waiting for my cereal to get soggy so I could eat it. Tammy came in huffed, then started cleaning, loudly complaining about a mess, the kitchen was spotless. She took my bowl and threw it in the bin, bowl and all. I snapped, yelling at her, calling her an abusive bitch, among other things. My dad came running and got between us. Tammy demanded that I leave the house and never be allowed near her child. Dad walked me to my room and said something that ruined our relationship forever. He told me that I must be doing something to Tammy because no one hates a kid for no reason, and if I kept stressing her, I'd have to move out. I made a social media post asking for a place to stay, explained the situation in detail, packed a bag, and climbed out my bedroom window, we live in a bungalow. About 30 minutes later, my phone started blowing up, but I turned it off and went to a friend's house. I texted my mom from my friend's phone to let her know everything. She didn't call for seven hours because she was in surgery. She said my aunt would pick me up the next day. My mom told my father I was okay, and that I'd be staying with my aunt for two weeks, until she could come home. Apparently, Dad and Tammy had to go door to door to family and friends' houses looking for me. After my post, they got a lot of flack. My grandparents still don't talk to him. My aunt packed up my room because I refused to go back into that house. I haven't spoken to my father in years or met my half brother. Tammy and Dad still try to fix our relationship, claiming pregnant women sometimes develop an irrational hatred towards certain people or pets. I'm turning 18 in three weeks, and a cousin's girlfriend asked about inviting my dad to my party. I told her the story. She said while well, what they did was wrong, what I did was also an asshole move because I made them worry and stress during a pandemic, putting a pregnant woman with mental health issues at risk with my stunt. I did. My dad has been trying for four years to get me to speak to him or fix the relationship, even tried taking my mom to court to force me to visit. My mom had to physically remove Tammy by the hair from her car once because she refused to leave until we talked it out, saying she was my stepmom for ten years and couldn't bear losing her daughter. I had to leave out a lot because the post would be a bulk. I'm in therapy now because my mental health was really bad. I've come a long way and am on medication for anxiety. I have terrible trust issues since it all happened, but hopefully, I'll get there one day. When my friend and her parents saw me, they were shocked. I'd lost a lot of weight, and my hair was extremely thin from falling out due to stress. My aunt took pictures to show in court. Before lockdown, I had a great relationship with them both, which made everything so hard to understand at the time. I know now because the lawyer mentioned it to my mom that many kids and women found themselves in similar situations but worse. I wasn't considered an emergency, so it wouldn't go to court for at least a year. Update, hi guys, I honestly thought I'd never give an update, but here I am. I'm gonna call my cousin's girlfriend Sarah, and my cousin Paul. I mentioned in a comment that I uninvited Sarah from the party. Yesterday, Paul came over to talk. He told me Sarah had issues in the past with her younger siblings. It was apparently really bad, her siblings lived with their mom full-time, and she lived with her dad. Long story short, Sarah was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in college, and went to therapy. Even though she's apologized, her siblings still won't have anything to do with her, which breaks her heart. Paul said Sarah told him that when I told her what happened, it triggered her because it reminded her of her situation with her siblings. I didn't mention this in the other post because it was irrelevant, but Sarah texted me about letting go of the hate, links to sites about family members with mental health issues, numbers of family therapists, and even subreddits on here. Paul told me Sarah wanted to meet up to clear the air and apologize in person. I said okay. 
Sarah texted about half an hour later about picking me up because she wanted to drive to a new restaurant that just opened in the next town over as her pre-birthday treat to me. We know what she was planning, but Tammy ruined it by calling my mom to tell her Sarah's plans to help us make up. I wrote my dad a letter two days ago, as many of you suggested. I put everything in there and told him how it still affects me. I told him I wanted a relationship with my brother, but wasn't sure I'd ever want one with him. I asked him to leave me alone, because his actions were pushing me away even more. If I ever decide to talk to him, it will be on my terms with my mom present. The letter ended up being five pages, and you guys were right, it did make me feel better. My mom dropped it off and dad asked to meet her a day later. They talked about me meeting my brother. My dad said he wants to buy me a car, no strings attached. They, Tammy and dad, also asked if it would be okay to give me money for my birthday. You guys might hate me for this but I'm taking the car in $500 and... If he wants to give me more, he can because college supplies and moving into a dorm are expensive. Back to Sarah. She contacted Tammy via Facebook. Tammy sent my mom the screenshots and told her everything I said, then asked Tammy her side, because Sarah, didn't believe me. To Tammy's credit, she told the truth, and took full accountability. It was Sarah, who kept trying to make Tammy out to be the victim. Sarah told Tammy about her own past and said, she'd try to mend our relationship. Tammy told her she didn't want her to. The last message was Sarah telling Tammy the location, and time we'd be at the restaurant. She even said she'd drive me so I couldn't leave, even though I'd just ask a waitress for help or call my mom. My mom posted the screenshots in the group chat and called Sarah a bunch of names, telling her if she ever came near me again, she'd regret it. I blocked Sarah and left the group chat. I don't know what happened afterward, but Paul came over with my aunt and swore he knew nothing about it. To be honest, I don't know if I believe him because he was trying to defend Sarah again, which got him a verbal lashing from my aunt and mom. That's it really. I'm gonna update in a few months to let you guys know how everything went with my brother. I feel like I owe everyone that after so many people helped me take that step. Honestly, words can't describe how happy it's made me. It's literally the best birthday present I could have gotten. Thank you so much for the amazing advice and people sharing their own experiences, even the women who suffered from mental illness like Tammy did. It helped me understand it a bit more, but I still can't forgive her. I don't think we can ever rebuild our relationship, especially to what it was. Edit, I've not spoken to my dad since, and my mom said not to worry about adult business and to focus on the rest of my summer and my upcoming party. From what I've been told by Paul, and from the stuff I saw in the screenshots, Sarah was horrible to her siblings. I dare say abusive, even in the watered-down version she told. In one episode, she cut up her sister's clothes and ruined all her makeup by throwing it against her sister's bedroom walls. But then she said she replaced everything afterward and apologized, so she doesn't understand why her sister still holds it against her. There's a lot more she said in the messages to Tammy. I didn't ask for the car or the money. He gave it with no strings attached. If he had said I'd have to talk to him, I wouldn't accept it. He doesn't have to legally give me another penny in three more weeks, but if he chooses to, that's on him.